everybody, welcome back to another fantastic episode of Ready to Die Fighting. My name is Chris. You can't see me because I'm doing a screen recording, but I'm here. You know me. And today, I'm going to be sharing with you some information about the Garmin Explore site. It's the companion site to the InReach Mini and I guess the whole InReach series of devices, GPS units, personal trackers, whatever you want to call it. Um, the website and the software is, is a little bit clunky. I'm not crazy about its design, but I am really happy with the service that it provides and um, what you can do with it. It took me a, a little bit, took me a minute to understand exactly how it worked and what was going on and also what this device was actually for. But once I got all that down and worked out the bugs, because you know what I'm always talking about is you got to test your gear. You can't just buy stuff and think it's going to work when you need it. I had to spend a lot of time testing this stuff out. And once I did all that and figured it out, I really like it and I highly recommend it. So I'm going to walk through this site just a little bit with you. I'm not going to be able to cover everything on it because I do not want to compromise my own privacy and some of the stuff of giving my location and phone number and all that I'm not doing all that but I will show you some of the other good stuff that uh, you know doesn't compromise anything so like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos and let's get to it all right so this like I said is the companion site to the inReach mini the inReach mini 2 there's a, I guess a full-size inReach there may be some other devices that I don't know about but those are the ones I'm most familiar with I think there may be a watch or something that can also use this um, and so this is just the home page and once you have a subscription and yes you do have to have a subscription to use the inReach mini to its full potential i don't know that it has much use without it but uh it's not that expensive and you can kind of turn it off and on They're, they have options they have payment options and you know get the one that's best for you i'm not going to cover that um so this is just what it looks like when you are logged in and have your subscription already. Um, it gives you just some basic stats and some stuff they want you to sign up for emails. Who cares? The part that's interesting, though, is the map. And I know that my laptop doesn't really like viewing the screen recorder, so I'm going to try to go quickly, and this map may not load all that well. Um, so with this device, you can not only track your location, but you can also send text messages to people, even if you don't have cell service, because it uses GPS to do all that. And it's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to click on the messages, because like I said, that will compromise some of my privacy and security. But that's where you can see all the messages that you've sent back and forth to various people through this app. Um, the waypoints are these red flags. I think, I think you can change the color of the flags. And so you can either look at them by um, uh, just looking on the map. And this shows all the travels that we've done. So if you're on like a multi-day or even multi-month doing like the Appalachian Trail or something like that, it'll show everything you did and not just one little hike or whatever up until uh, I think you can clear it and you know delete everything off and start over but i haven't done that i don't see any reason to i'm just i'm just leaving everything on there that i'm doing with it and so you can also click on this and go to various places so like that one here this takes us you know you name them to something useful bird hills park is um one of the parks we like going to it gives you the location and you can edit the name if i wanted to change this to something else or whatever and so that's pretty nice i think Let's cancel editing there. Um, and that's basically all it is. It's just giving me those white waypoints. Uh, the fan's kicking on already. The, this at laptop, it really doesn't like doing the uh, screen recording. So I'm sorry. It's got the fans turning on. It's going to get kind of loud. I'm going to try to talk over it as the best I can do for right now. Accepting donations to get me a new laptop. This is a bit old. More subscriptions subscribe and i can get a nicer laptop and edit videos and do cooler stuff again so this i just checked on if you didn't pay attention was tracks and this is cool because this will show us all the different recordings that we're doing so i can 
track a hike, say if, I, if it's a multi-day or whatever, I can track what I'm doing that day, and then as we're setting up camp, there's no need to track anymore until the battery, I can turn it off and like we're done for now, and the next day will be, could be my second one if that's what I wanted to do. So here's the trek, the um, little trip that we did this day, it's just a short little hike at the park, and it shows us, if I click on this here, um, so this map, I can actually um, send this map to other people. I can just make it public so anybody who has the link can look at it, or I can password protect it. And the people who are looking at it, they can do and see exactly what I'm seeing right now. So if I wanted to, I can click on this and I could activate tracking on this on the InReach Mini. So if my InReach Mini was turned on and had access to the sky, and let's say it wasn't in tracking mode, and for some reason I was concerned, like I see that it's off or maybe they haven't posted anything in a little while, I can go in here and click on that and it'll start tracking and figure out you know, where they are, assuming that it's actually on. Um, I could send them a message and just, hey, are you okay? Haven't heard anything since you stopped at that really shady town or whatever, something, I don't know. And they can get that message, even if they don't have cell service, as long as the inReach is on and they have access to the sky and that satellite, um, it should work. And then this, I can request the location of the user. And so that's not gonna be tracking where you are, but it'll just, it's telling the inReach to do a ping. So maybe if I have it set to ping only once every hour, and maybe I want to know where you are in between there, or maybe I, whatever the case may be, I can hit that button, and now it'll do a ping on command. Um, you got to be careful who you give access to this, because uh, I believe th this could potentially kill your battery and could give you additional charges depending on your um, plan. But in the case of an emergency, you know, who cares if you spent an extra dollar getting pinged or whatever it is. And so that's really nice to have. Um, actually, I'm not, oh, add to collections. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. So something that to keep in mind with this system is that it's not like Strava or All Trails or uh, some of those that are really like a personal tracker for fitness or to really monitor exactly where you're going, more for like recreational or statistics type purposes. This is really a rescue survival type of device. Um, if you look at the, the nature of these trails here, these are completely straight lines, like point to point. And this is where the satellite, um, where the device pinged the satellite. So it's just a straight line from point to point. You know, we may have walked along doing something like that or whatever. Who knows? We could have done something crazy like that. But if we did it within five minutes or ten minutes or whatever that was, it's just doing endpoint to endpoint. It's not counting all that. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. So if you're looking for something that's more like, I just want to have something that's going to monitor my steps and where I'm going and, you know, that sort of thing. This really isn't the right device for that. If you're looking for something where, you know, I'm out in the woods, I want to make sure that my loved ones know that I'm safe and are comfortable, and that if something happens to me, people will be able to find my corpse, you know, which, which cave the bear dragged me to, this is the device for you. Um, let's see. So, you can also, if it'll let me... So you can find that this way, but you can also, let's see, I've got more track summary somewhere. I don't even see that one. Let's see. Uh, I was trying to find, so because you can look at it that way, and then you can also look for it. Okay, so yeah, there's that same one. You can just see it on the map. It saves all of these until you delete them. So if you've got multiple, like I said, you're on a month-long excursion and you're going a bunch of different places, you'd be able to see all the different trails and hikes that you've done all over, over time. It doesn't reset after every time you stop and start it. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, 
plans and devices is exactly what it sounds like. It shows you a little picture of the device. It gives you its serial number or not serial number, but it's um, whatever its identification number is. I forget what they call it. It's not like a, kind of like an IP address or whatever. Uh, and it tells you what your plan is. I'm not going to click on that because some of my personal information would be displayed. Uh, I'm also not going to click on inbox, but that looks like exactly what you'd expect as well. All of your messages that you've received from through this app, through the software and the device, uh, are all going to be there. Contacts is really important because, with especially with the InReach Mini, I can't speak to the other versions, but you have no way of programming the contact numbers or the messages or anything like that within the actual device. You have to do it all beforehand and then sync. And then once it's in there, you just kind of use the buttons to scroll up and down and you see who you want to message and which preset message you want to use and that sort of thing. So you got to go into contacts before you go out into the woods and put in whoever you, whoever you want your contact person or persons to be and that's where you do that. Uh, messages, messages we're going to click on. So I've modified these so it's not showing the people who I normally would send this to but here are your preset messages and you really want to pay attention read the I don't know the details of your plan because depending on what your plan is um, I think the preset messages are always free but the quick text messages there might be a charge but it's maybe it's a lesser charge and then if you do a message on the fly there's a bigger charge for that or something like that. Read it, pay attention. I'm really only using the preset messages. Um, and you only get three, which is a little frustrating. To me, the most important one though is this first one that I always send out. And so I try to make a message that's, um, if the person replies, they you get a charge for it. So there's nothing dangerous happening. There's no reason to fly. So I put the do not reply in all caps, you know, but I want to let people know that Chris, myself, and then the people I'm going with, they're using their first initials because you got a limit on the number of characters you can use. So you want to make it short and sweet. And so basically letting everyone know who's in the party because sometimes it's just me. Sometimes it's one dog or no dogs, or it's just me and Nate or whatever. So who's in your party starting the hike, when I'm expecting to return, letting them know that they're my emergency contact. They probably already know that ahead of time, but just in case they forgot or whatever, and giving them the link to the website where they can track me and the password. I just typed in 000 for now. That's not what the password normally is. And do not reply. And you can send this to multiple people and they'll get it. They'll be able to click that link, see that map that I just showed you a minute ago track where you are, ping you if they need to, they can reply to this, and you will receive those messages on your cell phone because the inReach is connected by Bluetooth to your cell phone. If your cell phone battery is dead, I believe you can still see receive those messages on the inReach itself. You won't be able to do a message on the fly I don't think. I think you can only do that with the phone itself. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I haven't tested that part out yet, actually, what happens if your phone is off. But even if your phone doesn't have signal, um, you can still get the messages because it's received through the device, and then that uses Bluetooth to display the message on your phone. And then you can send messages back on the fly the exact same way. You can do the preset messages and the quick text messages completely independent of a phone, just on the little Garmin device. Um, so I have these three messages that I send out, you know, basically just letting people know that I'm okay. Um, probably should have one of them saying that I'm in trouble and to send help, but the Garmin has a SOS button. And so the purpose of that is for to actually get emergency help. I have not been able to test this. You're not supposed to test this. I do not want to pay any fees or whatever to have search and rescue come out and get me. But 
that is the purpose of it. You push that SOS button in the case of an emergency and search and rescue um, will try to contact you, but they will also get your most recent coordination or coordinates and they will come and find you. And so that's like the really amazing thing about this, you know, just having that that uh, just emergency backup plan, no matter how far out in the wilderness you are. Um, now, if it's not that big of an emergency, you know, I'm not sure what that would look like exactly, but maybe whatever you anticipate. I have not gone on a major hike where I, you know, all of our stuff that we're doing, we're in, we're in the metro area. You know, you can't walk too far without getting some houses. So I hadn't felt that that was necessary to really test out or make a message for that. It's really just me testing things and uh, making sure it works. So you just hit the edit button. Like it's saying, do not use preset to declare an emergency. The SOS function be used for emergency assistance. You can type in whatever recipients you want, put in your country code, um, comma to separate them, and then you can click on whether you want to share your map or not. And, um, and then it will do that. You can also and so now you have to sync in order for it to actually take effect. Um, you can edit these to be whatever you want them to be, and that's it. So, that's awesome. Social. So this is where, you know, you can link this to your Facebook, Twitter, email, and all that if you want. I haven't done that. I don't really want yeah, I don't see a need to, but I do have this. This is my map site. Um, like I said, mine is password protected, so I don't care if you guys get it here, but um, you have to have a password. I'm not going to click on this because that will give me some personal stuff, I believe, but you can adjust your settings. You can change the name to something else uh, that's more appropriate to you. I think it's initially it's just like XY772 exclamation point. Um, so you can make it something a bit more personal, assuming it's available. You can change your password. You can you know, do whatever you want. And so when we click on this, this is the link that the people who, uh, oh, I must, um, darn, let me see. I must have saved the password. Let me think, how can I, I must have some cookies or something. Um, let's see if I can copy link and then let's go to Internet Explorer and put that in. Okay, so this is what you'll see if, um, or, or whatever, whatever you set this up to be in the settings there, uh, this is what you can leave whatever message you want. So you type in the password that the person gave you. And then, ow. Oh. My password wrong. No. And so now, this is the same map that we just saw before. So I can see all those same things. Uh, messages is. Um, smaller because I'm not showing all the messages. I think it's just showing the ones that maybe were sent, not the ones that were received or something along those lines. I'm not going to click it to find out, but it's showing all the same tracks and waypoints and whatnot. Uh, it's got the little message that I left and uh, there you go. I mean, that's kind of went, our, went through this already, but same map. Um, is there anything else here? I think that's about it. I am going to make another video, or maybe I already have by the time you're watching this. I can't 
No, I haven't made it yet, but maybe when you're watching it. <laughs> I, can't remember. I keep thinking about making a video about this inReach, and yeah, I think I haven't done it yet. Um, on the hardware side of it. This video turned out being longer than I expected, and I felt like I was talking fast. Uh, so that'll be a separate video and kind of explain how the buttons work and what the screens on the actual mini looks like itself. Overall, I do really like this uh, device. The software, I think, could be designed a little bit nicer, but I think it's overall really cool. And I do recommend it if you're going out into the deep woods or some long trek someplace crazy but i don't really recommend it for a ride around you know a, a hike around the neighborhood a little jog or a bike ride or whatever you don't need it it doesn't make sense to me to pay for a subscription and to carry an extra device you can just use your cell phone so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope it was helpful and i will see you guys in the next video